Hey guys, welcome back to Bad Ombre Garage. If you guys have been following along with this series, this Chevy 4.3 liter V6 rebuild series, well, today's the day that we're finally going to assemble the short block. Follow along, check it out, let's see how we can get this done. All right, so there is going to be a method to the madness today. The first thing which I've done off camera is clean, 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 clean. I've just done a bunch of cleaning on the block, uh, pistons, rods, all the crank camshaft, my uh, main caps to go in. And if you haven't already checked it out, just check out my last video. I'll put a link up in the corner, one of the corners of the window of the uh, screen here. And you can see the link about how we did the... Um, Dingle ball hone on the cylinder walls to break the glaze, get a good cross hatch on there, as well as polish the crank that's hiding over there in that plastic bag. Uh, that's gonna be a good start. Now we're up to assembly day, and here's the method for this. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, basically put this thing together dry. We're gonna put the crank in, we're gonna put main caps on dry, and we're gonna use everybody's favorite plastic gauge to measure our bearing clearances and make sure they are in the ballpark. That's, you know, plastic gauge is pretty good. It makes, lets you know that you're in the ballpark or you'll be safe. So we'll check our main bearing clearances with the plastic gauge, uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll check each one of our rod uh, bearing clearances onto the, uh, on the crank journal with the plastic gauge as well. Once we're all happy with that and that our clearances are good, we'll take it, everything back apart that we have assembled. We'll go ahead and we'll hang the uh, rings on the pistons and then we're gonna go ahead and lube everything and put it all together. We'll, we'll lay the crank, uh, torque it down, and then we'll put each in, in each one of the pistons and torque them down as well. Uh, and at some point in there, I gotta check my ring, ring end clearance gap. I will probably start with that since that's kinda, might be a showstopper. Little man's helping out here today. Uh, what I did is I pulled one of the top rings out of the package there, dropped it into the number one cylinder, and then I just used my piston as a guide here to kind of make sure it's square in there and dropped it down into where it squared up and uh, check the gap there and that came out to 17 thousandths uh, which if I bust open my little book it tells me with it which should be between I think 12 and 16 thousandths close enough uh, we're gonna go with that so We'll double check, make sure the rest are the same as we go throughout this whole process, but I'm happy with our, with our piston rings. They should be good when we get to that point. But first, now I gotta do is I gotta roll this over. Uh, let's get the crank out and we'll dry everything off because it's all been oiled up real well so it didn't rust. Set, the, set some bearings in there and let's start checking clearances on our uh, main bearings. Hey, I'm not an expert engine builder. I've done this a few times, but uh, I'll just kind of share any tips that I have along the way. Uh, the biggest one is being making sure that you put the right bearing shell in the proper uh, journals, right? So like a, there's the top top bearing, the bottom, the bottom one obviously has a groove, and of importance is the hole where it lines up with our cam bearing uh, for oiling the cam bearing. So I'm gonna snap those into place, uh, all four of them, to include our thrust bearing on the rear, There we go. Yeah. I don't want to spin it around in there and I don't want to scratch anything up. Okay, now let's get ourselves set up and uh, we'll start checking some, checking some of our clearances with the plastic gauge. What do you think? It's pretty good. All right. Okay, so I got my, I'm gonna go with um, red plastic gauge and I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna trim a little snippet of it and I'm gonna set it on each of the journals right on the top. And then I'm gonna come through and put my bearing caps, uh, I'm sorry, bearings inside the caps and then start sliding them down and get them to snap into place and get the bolt started. Paying close attention because we wanna make sure that those bearings may, or the uh, main caps snap down inside these ridges. I've seen where guys will break a block or break a main cap. Um, by not having it, letting it, you know, step down into these little steps right here. And then of course, when we tore the engine down, we took these uh, careful 
note to make sure we noted which ones of these caps where they came out of, you know, where they came out of on the block and the orientation of which way is forward. If we mess that up, obviously, then we'd have to redo it and have it line honed. All right, so I'll get in here close so you can see. Luke helped me. He used his fine dexterity and little hands and was able to lay our plastic gauge down on each of the journals. And I'm going to grab the caps now. And I'm going to slowly pop those things on nice and smooth and put some bolts in and get them tightening up. All right. Trivia. Uh, write in the comments of what the answer is. What year was the Model A made? Okay, let's torque them, man. Torque them? Torque them down. Oh. Oh. Torque them down, and we're going to bring them down to 75 foot-pounds, but let's start by bringing them up to 25, and we'll go from there, okay? All right. Okay, now we're gonna now we're gonna bust them loose, pull the caps off, and then we'll look at that plastic gauge and see what the clearances are. Popped them loose. Let's see what's left here. We'll look at this front one because I think we can see it a little better. We can see that we're somewhere between twenty and thirty thousandths, right? Okay, and if I go across and check each one of these. You're going to see that they're all just about the same. I checked them all before we got on camera here. All right, so that's a little bigger than 30, a little bit smaller than 20. Look over my book. Yep. 20 to 35 is good, so I am extremely happy with our clearances on the mains. Okay, next step, I'm going to go in here and very carefully clean this, clean this off. I don't want to scratch these bearings up. But I'm just going to take this plastic gauge off my four bearings, my four journals, and then we get to start uh, lubricating this, and uh, we'll go ahead and tie this crank in. All right, we went ahead and pulled the crank back out, uh, removed all the plastic gauge, just very carefully getting it out of there without tearing the bearing up at all. Now we're going to grab some oil. We'll put some lubricant in there. Luke's getting the... Uh, the uh, assembly lube open. You doing all right there, bud? Yeah, fine. <laughs> He's getting the assembly lube open. And we're going to lube up all these bearings. We'll lube up the crank and uh, set the crank in there. We'll torque the caps down just like we did before to check them. We'll bring it back when we got this sucker bolted in. So we did pretty good. Crank's in there. Uh, spins freely. Goes all the way through. Actually feels really nice. I'm happy with those bearing clearances and how the uh, crank moves. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab some pistons, and Luke's going to help me. Uh, no rings on them. We're just going to bring it in from the bottom, and we're going to do that same process. This is a little bit harder than the main caps because this crank might try to move, so I'm going to probably put a screwdriver in or somehow to keep it from spinning. Uh, but we're going to do that same process, and we're going to check uh, plastic gauge all of our, our journals on here. Okay, so six of them. And it's going to take a little process, but we're going to get there. And like I told Luke, once we set the piston in there, he's going to hold it while I gather it up and push it around the bearing and don't let it scrape up the bearing or scrape up the journal, excuse me. And he's going to keep it from falling back out. Another thing I should have added here, uh, obviously I didn't have to deal with a, a rear main seal because this is a one piece rear main seal block. So I didn't have to deal with that. That's a whole other thing. You got a two piece rear main seal, no big deal. Just remember, remember to put it in when you put that rear main cap in. Okay, let's grab our number one piston. We'll start with that. And uh, we put some bearing shells in it. And then I'll have you hold it in there as we slide it up into the cylinder. You ready? All right. Now let me get the bearings out. All right, so now we're up to the part of the, uh, of the operation where we get to measure our rod journal and rod bearing. Uh, actually, we're just measuring the rod, rod bearing clearance. We're going to use more plastic gauge for that. Uh, the clearance that I want it to be between 17 and 30 thousandths is what I'm looking for. So this should work. This is from 10 to 30 thousandths. I'm just gonna put a little piece on there. I got the crank with some bolts here and stuff to try to keep it from turning. And we're gonna torque this bad boy down, pop it off, check some gaps. 
Okay, so our first round of plastic gauge on our number one bearing. Come on, man, focus. Work with me here. There you go. That measures out just right in between 15 and 20. The minimum we're looking for is 17, so I am pretty pleased with that. I'm going to repeat that process five more times, and I'll bring you back. All right. All of our bearings checked out great for our rod journals, so I'm excited about that. Uh, I went ahead and set everything aside and got them ready to, let's put some rings on some pistons and stuff them in the block. So I have my little book here and it just gives me a little cheater. I just leave the page open here and tells me exactly how I want to orient all my rings. I guess that's pretty important. And so I've done that like on the number one piston here, which you know it's number one because I wrote number one on it. Also because before I took the engine apart, I had stamped number one on the caps and the uh, rods. But I oriented them all like that. My plan now is to go ahead and get them all nice and oily, put some uh, assembly lube on my bearings, and we'll get us around here and we'll go ahead and drop them in. All right, I'm hanging all these rings on the pistons and uh, just a couple of things I always try to take you know, note of is there is an orientation usually for top and bottom and they do you a favor and put a little dot or right top on there. You can use these kind of pliers that grab the ring and expand it and pop it over there or somewhere along the way I picked up this one. So here's another, here's a tip on how I put them in there. I just basically put it in the gap. This one's going in the second gap backwards and then I swing it over and then just work it around. And there you go. That's on there. This one's going to go in the top ring. Top groove, same thing. Put it on there backwards. Just don't break it. There we go. All right. Rings are all installed. Let's oil these bad boys up and start dropping them in holes. Well, this is exciting. This is the uh, part of the game where we finally get to put the pistons in the engine. Uh, number one. Like I like to label mine, make sure I got the right one, make sure it's oriented the right direction. That's probably the most important thing. Make sure you got the right pistons in the right holes. Uh, next thing, there are some really sweet tools there, like tapered rings, where you just pop them on over here and you just drop your piston in there and it compresses those rings and you just pop and it goes right in there. I don't have one of those. I have, I think, the Harbor Freight version probably, of uh, the piston ring compressor, that's that. And also the other thing I have going on here is a pan because I've got oil and there's gonna be oil everywhere. We want oil, we don't want nothing, we don't want anything going together dry here. We want the piston to be nice and oiled up and I'm gonna go ahead and oil up the cylinder walls um, while I'm talking about that. So I'm gonna take my rag that I've got some oil on, wipe down my cylinder wall. We're gonna to go to the number three cylinder here. Once that's good, I'm gonna grab my number three piston I want to get all the way down and on the uh, wrist pin and all the rings and make sure the skirt's oiled up too there. And then I'm going to move it over here and put on my compressor and get ready to drop it in there. Oh, and I got these little guys too. It's kind of, you can do like a piece of rubber hose on the uh, rod bolts to keep them from scraping the crank on the way by. I don't know, somewhere along the way I got a, I got a set of these and decided to put those in. All right, so there's a trick here to getting this square. Uh, well, that is the trick, is to get it square. And then I like to just have a little bit of the skirt popping out all the way around. Make sure it's nice and square. And then once that's that way, then I can bring it on nice and tight. Oops. There we go. I don't want them all to ride, roll around. But nice and tight. Okay? See, there we go. We got a little bit of the skirt hanging out. It's on there square. Let's try this. Okay, drop it in the hole. Get the skirt to start in. Okay, it's going. That's good. And then I'll catch it on the bottom, and then the guy's just kind of got to commit. Ready? Just like that. Now that it's in the hole, we can bring it down nice and carefully right down onto the journal and put a cap on it.
Okay, it's that easy. <laughs> now I only have to do it uh, four more times. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the number five one in here, that way it's just doing one bank at a time. Uh, I'll bring those all snug, we'll roll it over, and then we'll go through and we'll torque down each one of those uh, down to spec. Well, we've successfully put all six pistons in and have the connecting rods tightened, um, just hand tight, right? I just I snug them down the best I could and just enough to roll the crank around and get them all in. I like them doing do that way, I like to do it that way rather than put one in, roll it over, torque it down, roll it back, torque it. Uh, on a small block Chevy, I might do it that way. On this one, I feel I can get away with it because none of the rods share a journal, right? They're all offset a little bit, so it's just one rod, one rod on one journal, so if it's moving around at all, it's... Anyway, I'm not gonna mess anything up. I like to do it that way so that now I have this set up where I can just go walk down the line and torque everything down all at once. Now on the book, you guys maybe that do this a little more often than I do uh, on some newer stuff can tell me uh, but when I looked up torque specs for a 4.3 liter, liter V6, it talked about using the angle wrench, right? So it uh, recommended a 15 foot pound torque and then to use an angle wrench for like, I don't know, 72 degrees or something. Um, well, so I thought about that. I thought, well, maybe now's the time I need to go get one of those angle wrenches. And then I thought, wait a minute, this is basically a small block Chevy. And we've been putting small block Chevys together for years by just torquing them down without using the angle, uh, you know, type finding system. So I just used, I'm going to use my small block Chevy specs. We'll use 45 foot pounds. I'm going to bring them all down to 15 and then I'll bring them all down to 30 and then I'll bring them all down to 45. Uh, that's my plan. Hey, what do you guys do? What do you recommend? Am I messing something up by doing that? Just put it down in the comments below. Let me know what you, uh, what you think. All right, we'll wrap this up here in just a minute. Thanks for following along today. We got this thing all in there, uh, and it, if I can get this on there, it sure, it rotates through really smoothly. All the rods fit real nice. Um, this is going together real well. I'm excited. This engine should work out just great for the old Jeep. Um, okay, before I shut it down for the day, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to move up this camshaft, and I'm going to stuff it in the block there. Just because this is the last of my clean parts that have been out and I don't want to leave a clean part out. I can put that in there, wrap this uh, block back to block, engine all back together, push it off to the side because I got to pull in heads and clean those up. I've got to get my timing gear, find that, gear ready to install that. Oh, we've got all kinds of stuff to do to get this engine together. But all that you're going to have to catch next time on Bad Home Garage. Thanks for following along.